Hello everybody, Slough here. Uh, I wanted to show you a couple of things that have changed in the new release of Pro Tools 12. Uh, I'm currently using the release candidate, so uh, there is certainly a possibility that uh, one th or two things might change. It's highly unlikely, but um, I just wanted to say that because <clears throat> this is technically, uh, I'm doing this before the official, official, official release. Um, but anyway, we had an enormous um, amount of progress in this particular version of Pro Tools. Um, as many of you uh, probably know on the list um, uh, uh, that... I was able to, uh, and I had the opportunity to meet with uh, the programmers in Ukraine and uh, what initially, what I thought was going to be a visit um, to sort of deal with a couple of sort of what I like to call qual quality of life issues or inequality of life issues, um, ended up being completely different from what I expected and also whereas I thought we would ultimately get a couple of fixes for some some stuff uh, we ended up having a, a sort of like a an updated list of bugs that was sort of in the neighborhood of I don't know 50 50 things or so um, and as it turns out, even though it's not what I had originally envisioned, uh, ultimately in the end this far exceeded anything I could have uh, imagined, really. Uh, in this release we have something on the order of, I think officially sort of the list came out to about 40 uh, fixes in, in Pro Tools 12.2 point whatever it ends up being, I'm not sure. Um, so a couple of things are different. It's largely the same, of course, but I wanted to, uh, I thought it would be helpful for some people uh, to sort of give a heads up and give a demonstration of what's different uh, in this new release. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm sitting here in front of um, my uh, trusty uh, multi-track of Bohemian Rhapsody, which I'm sure everybody has, of course, by now. Um, but it, I just find that it's such an easy way to open up, a, you know, a, a multi-track session just to test a few things. So I, I tend to sort of gravitate toward it for some reason. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm here in the mix window. Mix. Okay, so I'm in the mix window, and the first thing, if you go to the the first thing that you would encounter in the mix window, providing you have the tracks uh, showing the tracks list. Tracks is the word tracks, which in previous versions, uh, we would have tracks and then like, I think it said text or something like that, or static text, which is just superfluous and was not necessary. That's changed now. So it just speaks the word that is there without the appendage of static text or whatever. Um, small issue, but just technically it's just one of those things that I thought, yeah, we need to change this so that it behaves the way it should. Uh, not too much, you know, not too verbose, etc., etc. Um, to the right of that, um, although technically I think it might even be below it, really, uh, it appears to the right as far as voiceover is concerned, um, was something that we all saw as show hide, and then it said something like show hide label or something. Um, and that was a pop-up button uh, that lets you show all tracks, hide all tracks, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that, the word show hide is a vestige from way back, way back when. That really just says tracks. <laughs> that's, that's really all it says. So that's been renamed. Track list pop-up button. So it says tracks list pop-up button and that's where you have Menu. show all tracks, show all, tracks. Show all, tracks. Uh, all, all that tracks. stuff okay that's all the same okay um and let me jump down to the uh to the end of the window uh there were two icons uh one for they were both called like let me see what they were called here 
Mix window view selector. Oh, mix window view selector. And there were two of them. One, I mean, although they were named the same thing, one was for view options, which you could find under the view menu and mix window views, etc., etc. That's this last button, actually. Menu, my preamps, instrument, check mark, insert CD. You know, that, that that control, you know what I'm talking about if you're a Pro Tools user. Well, the other one, you know, I, I could never remember which was which, which one was actually the track show hide, mix window view selector, or, which, you know, whether, you know what I'm saying, you'd have to sort of take a guess, and if you didn't remember, you just hit one, and if it didn't pop up a list, you knew that you show, um, you know, hid or showed the, the tracks list. Uh, in this case, to the left of that, or before that control... Track list show slash hide button. Now it says tracks list show hide button. So if you if you click on that, that will hide the tracks list. So if I go to the beginning of the session here, not the beginning of the session, but the, the top of the window, um, you know, it doesn't have the track list. Um, it, it doesn't have the the track the word tracks anymore or the track list pop-up button, the first thing you'll see is the first audio track, like all the various uh, tracks. So uh, so that's that's a nice thing that at least it wasn't labeled correctly. Uh, let me open that track list uh, selector again. Uh, not that I need it right now, but just that's what I'm used to. Um, Okay, so let's take a look in the channel strip. Uh, let's interact. Okay, so uh, the first thing which is uh, significant uh, here is the the level of interaction of sends. Uh, it used to be just sort of like the the inserts here. If you interact, you know, you have your uh, various inserts, and they're all labeled A and B and C, etc. Uh, the sends, unfortunately, did not follow that uh, hierarchy. They did in, like, version 9 and, I think, 10, but things changed in 11, and they got a little bit screwed up. So I'm going to go into sends now, and sends A and E. Here I'm going to interact, and... So now we have send selector A. I'm going to go down. So now these, you don't have to interact with individual sends, which was just such a pain in the neck. And you never could be certain which send you were on. Uh, so now, you know, you, you, you can be certain of what selector you're on and you only have one level of interaction. So that's really quite nice. Let me get out of that. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Hang on a second, hang on. I, I went down instead of across. Okay, so IO. Uh, again, no text appended to this word. And some of these labels uh, admittedly are sort of redundant, but uh, I, for now it's okay. If they're going to be there, at least they don't have that extra verbiage. Um, so after the, uh, you know, in, in the IO section, you know, you have an input and an output. Um, uh, you could deduce what you were on, whether it was input or output, but sometimes, like, for example, I guess most people's, hap uh, people's, most people happen to use, like, uh, you know, their main stereo. Uh, for me, it's A1 and 2, um, but, uh, you know, I often use different, Outputs. I use mono outputs for uh, for signal routing purposes and for headphone mixes, etc. So um, I'm not necessarily certain, or at least in version you know 10 or 11, I was not necessarily certain of what I was on based on whether it was mono or stereo because sometimes they were both mono and sometimes the input is stereo, not mono, etc. So finally, that has been changed to reflect what is an input and what is an output. So I'm going to move across here. So it says audio input path selector, and it tells you what's there first, which is nice. Uh, you don't have to wait. You can just immediately 
So I, I immediately hear that it's, you know, the A1 and 2, and it tells me that it's the output selector. Audio output path selector. And I'm interrupting voiceover so it doesn't keep chattering in the background. But uh, moving on. Uh, output window is the same. All of this stuff. Oh, automation. Okay, so here, this used to just read, uh, well, it used to say read or write or whatever. Uh, which was okay, is fine, but uh, Auto read. automation mode selector pop up button. All right, so now it says automation mode selector, and it's a pop up button. Uh, for HD users who have the trim mode, uh, it would also indicate uh, whether trim was active in there. Uh, so that's a nice little addition. It doesn't affect too many people, but it, that is definitely nice for HD users. Uh, group ID is the same. One zero zero to the left. Pan not, not. Okay, pan. Track input monitor button. Okay, so the uh, vertical fader, um, I don't remember if in the, I, I just simply can't recall because I've been using 12 kind of for a while and I just don't remember whether 11, uh, whether version 11 and 10 and earlier had the minus indicator properly noted in this case. I'm not sure. I think it did. So in other words, if you went down, I think it did report that correctly. Um, but uh, the, the next thing is definitely, uh, has definitely changed, which is the level meter. Okay, so in the past, uh, the level meter would, you know, give you a value and you would just simply uh, understand or assume that that level was a minus value, as it would presumably always be in, in a full-scale system. Uh, but now, I'm just going to roll this a little bit, for example, and I'll probably have to turn it down or, or stop it at a certain point, but you'll notice the level meter... Is this the real light? Minus 1, 2 dB. Level meter. So it says minus... 1, 2 dB. Um, so uh, that's a nice thing. I mean, again, it's not a big deal, but it is one of these, you know, quality of life things that that's the way it should be. And uh, and I'm happy that they made that change. Um, and incidentally, I don't have it showing here now and I don't have any plugins enabled. Uh, but another nice thing is that the, uh, the gain reduction meter uh, never did work. And I don't mean that it didn't work for voiceover, I mean the gain reduction meter did not work in Pro Tools for a long time and Avid was actually not even aware of the problem until I sort of brought it up from the accessibility standpoint that we weren't seeing it working and they realized, oh my gosh, it's not working, period. So now it is working and uh, it does read correctly, So, which is, again, a nice thing and it gives you the minus values, etc., etc. All right. Um, let me move uh, forward. Okay. All right. This is where I jumped the gun before. Um, there is a feature in uh, Pro Tools that's been around forever, and it was uh, sort of not technically accessible. Um, it was sort of, sort of halfway, essentially, uh, in very early versions of Pro Tools, and that is the uh, volume and uh, peak and delay uh, display, uh, numeric display, and old-time uh, Pro Tools users will, of course, recall that, you know, you would see the, um, you know, we didn't have access to the, the volume fader per se, but we knew what the value of that fader position was because there was a volume, a numeric volume display, and if you command clicked on that display, um, it would cycle between a peak display uh, telling you what was the highest peak attained in you know the playback or the recording uh, the session etc in, in the waveform really and if you command clicked again it would cycle to delay value now delay value of plugins is what we're talking here um, before we had uh, delay compensation that was a real consideration for um, keeping uh, phase coherency between tracks that had perhaps different plugins on them, different plugin values, and you had to instantiate time adjuster plugins to sort of keep things 
in, in correct, uh, you know, correlation, etc. Well, that has not been accessible in Pro Tools um, since, you know, version 8.0. whatever it was, where the very first version was sort of uh, pretty much accessible. And again, through 9 and 10 and 11 and the, the first versions of 12, uh, this has not been accessible. Now, uh, the volume, numeric uh, volume, uh, is already stated by voiceover so that when you encounter a fader, um, you know what that value is. I mean, voiceover tells you. So that table wasn't initially... Uh, super important. Uh, and with delay compensation, that's kind of not so important. It It is in a way, but it's not a deal breaker most of the time. But the aspect of it that was helpful was this uh, peak display. Now, in the meters, in the level meters, you can set the meter to have an infinite peak hold. And that's great. That's fine. Uh, but really, the way a sighted user experiences uh, the level displays, you know, they'll see that level display and it's constantly moving, constantly changing. And below that display, I think it's a little bit off to the left, is a numeric value which displays the highest peak attained thus far. And if you click on it, that'll reset the value. Um, and so... A sighted user really has two different uh, perspectives on that level meter. It's the constantly changing value uh, and possibly like three second peak hold or whatever. Uh, but that essentially ultimately sort of goes away, resets itself, resets itself, goes back to zero by itself. Whereas the peak number still always stays there. And that was one thing that I wanted to have them expose. And this feature right now, the way it's implemented and probably will be released this way, uh, is not the final version of how this will be. It probably will be this way in this version of, in this release of Pro Tools. Um, I think ultimately it will change. It it works okay. I mean, it does work technically, but it doesn't work uh, the way it should. Um, the user experience is not what it should be exactly. But and for what it's worth, I'm just going to show you what it is for now and show you how it does work and how it doesn't work. Um, and uh, okay, so it's like what they're calling it is a volume delay peak table or something like that. Let me, I'm focused on it right now, so I'm just going to repeat the um, this item here. Volume delay peak table is the voice over cursor, row three to three, peak minus one, one point six, button, row three selected. Okay, so it's, it's quite verbose. That's the first thing. Um, the volume delay peak table is, I said before, you know, this numeric value. Uh, it's really displayed in th potentially in three different places beneath the fader and then sort of to the other value, the, the peak value is next to the level meter and the delay uh, compensation, you can choose that under the view menu. That's yet a third uh, sort of area, you know, that displays these values. Um, what what Avid has done is that they, they've made this into a table that has sort of like three, mm, three values, okay? And it's just, again, the experience is not the same. One would normally just see a number uh, and command click it and cycle, uh, et cetera. But this table, I'm going to interact with it. Interact with volume delay peak table, row three, selected. All right, it says that row three is selected, and that's the that peak value. If I move backwards, delay zero, row two. It says row two, it's delay zero. Zero point zero vertical fader. All right, so it has 0, 0.0 vertical fader. Okay, so the thing is, you can interact with this and change this. Notice that the increments are smaller than the half dB uh, increments that are on the main fader. Minus 0 0.1. 0 0.0. Okay. Um, this is a redundant 
control right now the way it is. Uh, and the fact that it's redundant... <sighs> If for sighted users, they can actually click on that number below the fader and a little fader pops up and you can make that adjustment if you want. Um, I don't think a voiceover user needs that because we already have the volume fader, but okay, fine. Um, now I'm going to go to, um, oh, and by the, by the way, by default, this uh, volume delay peak table is set to peak. Okay, uh, and that's that third row. Minus one point six. Okay, and notice I don't know if you remember, but uh, the level meter that I read before said minus twelve. Uh, incidentally, just on the side, um, the level meter in terms of even when it's on peak hold, uh, between you and me, it's not absolutely accurate okay um it rounds off numbers and uh for all i know even this peak uh display rounds off numbers but it's more accurate it in this case it's telling me uh minus 11.6 11 yeah it's saying 11.6 and i would trust that peak uh value more than the level meter now uh See, having this peak display allows you to, uh, let's say, you know, pay attention to your level meters while, uh, let's say you're tracking something and you want to know sort of what average levels are. Uh, if you, if your, if your meters are set to infinite peak hold, well, you know, one little, I don't know, foot stomp or a uh, kick of the, um, uh, mic stand or something, a plosive, whatever, could bring that peak up naturally uh, to minus 2. And meanwhile, your average levels might really be down at minus 18, minus 20, uh, where they generally should be anyway. But, you know, your uh, peak, your infinite peak hold might uh, lead you to believe that things are quite a bit louder than they are, uh, than they actually are. And sort of keeping a three second peak hold uh, will allow you to look at those level meters and say, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm averaging sort of minus 15, minus 12 or something like that. But if you really wanted to know the, the, the highest peak achieved, which you should want to know that, um, you could then look at this peak value and sort of then have a, a much better idea, those sort of two bits of information, uh, what you see in the level meter currently and what the highest peak was achieved. And and incidentally, this peak uh, display, or this peak value in the in the delay table, uh, if you press it, it, it resets it to infinite, okay? So just like a level meter. Um, Okay, so uh, let me jump out of here and just point out. Stop interacting with volume delay peak table row three of three peak minus infinite. Bottom, okay. Oh, and by the way, yeah, let me interact with it by the way. With volume delay peak table row three and selected. go back to delay. Delay zero. All right, and I'm going to stop interacting. Stop interacting with volume delay peak table row three of three peak minus infinite. Button row three selected. Hold on a second. Volume delay peak table is in the voiceover cursor row three of three peak minus infinite. Button, yeah. Okay, so it's it's on peak right now. I thought it was going to reset to delay, but that's fine. I'm going to continue reading to the right. Volume delay peak table row one of three zero point zero vertical fader row one selected. Okay, so now it's 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 as if voiceover sees a different table, all right, still call the same thing, volume delay peak table, but it's focused on that volume fader, the first fader. And again, that's redundant for us because we already have a volume fader. So this was a mistake. I'm not going to say it's a mistake. It was a... I guess they didn't realize that this would be redundant necessarily. And again, in this, in this implementation, it's redundant. Um... Because, for example, if if I wanted to if I wanted to bring up uh, an item chooser of the volume faders, all right, I'm gonna go and type uh, Pro Tool Fizzy. item chooser. Menu. Item items. chooser. I'm gonna type volume. I have seventy two items. There are only twenty four um, faders in this uh, thing, but you'll notice. Volume delay peak table row three of three peak minus infinite. 
See, like it, it's showing me all of the volume delay peak tables, not only the volume uh, parts of it, but also the peak values because it's bringing up the item chooser will bring up anything that has volume, the word volume associated with it. And so, therefore, uh, even if I typed peak to bring up the peak values, it would bring up 48 items because the tables that have uh, volume displayed and not peak displayed in them are called volume delay peak table, etc. Et so this is where it really doesn't work well uh, with voiceover. And uh, what can I say? It's going to change, uh, but I would still you know, it's still better to have this even the way it is um, than to not have it. Because if I do uh, type peak, bring up an item chooser again. All right. So it's giving me 48 items, even though they're only, you know, again, I'm interested in 24 tracks and their peak values. Every other one is going to be the peak display. So it's, that's the that's the first one. I'm going to skip two or skip one, as it were. All right. So that's the second track. I'm going to skip again. So you you it's still useful because I can see what the peak values are. It's just that I have to skip the volume version of that table. Um, yeah, again, I'd rather have this than not have it, but uh, it will change in the future. I'm going to escape this. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, that's just where it's at with that uh, table. I'm going to continue on in this channel strip. Uh, okay, so now the track type, that's the same. All right, so the track name, uh, that used to just simply be text that you could bring up a contextual menu on. Um, now it's become a button, so you don't have to do the contextual menu. You could just press on, uh, you know, just do the default action. Menu, you know, you can make, an make it, excuse me, make an active rename, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's a small change. Um, but eh, for some people, I guess it might be significant. If you came across the track name in, in version 10 or 11, uh, you'd see the text, but you might not know that you could bring up a contextual menu and do the renaming, et cetera, et cetera, right from that window. Um, this next thing, comments. Uh, the comments field, uh, unfortunately, this got a little bit screwed up. I mean, it still works, uh, but it used to be that when you encountered the comments uh, field, you, you would just read it. And now you have to sort of interact. With comments, interact comments, text. And then it says edit text. Like, I'm going to type some text here. Press comments, edit text. Um, I'm going to say uh, this field filed. filed. Oh, boy, did I misspell. <laughs> Field. Okay. This field sucks. Sucks. Okay. Period. Um, I'm going to stop interact with it. Uh, interacting with it, and I'm going to move back and move forward. You see, it just it says comments, and I can't read that field unless I interact with comments. Comments. Edit text. You know, interact with it. Comments. Comments. Comments, edit text. Oh, geez, it did. I, I guess I didn't Press. type it. Comments, oh no, yeah, there it is. Text. Yeah, that's weird. You know, it's just not behaving correctly. I mean, I and I can find this uh, comment if if I if I stop interacting, stop interacting with comments. and stop interacting with, oh, that one. Audio track. stop interacting with that thing, and I do an item chooser for comments. Let's Pro say. Comments. Oh, again, it's bringing up 48 items, or it's only 24, so it probably... Comments. Yeah. Comments. Edit text. Yeah. Comments. Right. So it's it's bringing up the comments field, the edit text field, plus, like, the comments uh, container, if you will. Comments. Yeah. You see? Comments. Comments. Edit text. Comments. Comments. Edit text. Comments. Every other one... Comments, edit text. Is comments, edit text. Every other one is comments. Yeah, so, you know, I don't know. Somebody 
inadvertently reported this as a bug, uh, and it wasn't. And um, I think I I think this might have been fixed in the final version. I'm I'm not sure. I I hope it is. You know, it's not it's not the end of the world. It's okay. But eh, you know, uh, just for now, uh, if <laughs> if you really rely on comments quite a bit, uh, it's just a drag. You'll have to kind of. Uh, interact with it and stuff like that. But anyway, all right, uh, let's move out of the uh, channel strip. All right. Region list should be renamed into clips list table to be interactive. Uh, edit window. Okay, edit window. Region list should be renamed into clips list table to be interactive. Track options element needs to be added. Track options. Selected state should be identified by VO and delete unused playlist window. Waveform button should be renamed into track view selector pop-up menu. Voice selector, the time base selector should be signed as pop-up buttons. New line. Okay. Alright, let's go to the edit window. Edit, check, edit. Oh. And, um, well, let's see, in the edit, edit window, uh, it is... Uh, oh, uh, largely the same. There are a couple of minor changes. Uh, like, for example, uh, there was the... Just like the show hide had a label, you know, attached to it, um, we had regions label, and that's also a vestige of older versions of Pro Tools. Now it says clips. So uh, now... Uh, let me do an item, um, item okay. chooser. So it says clips table, and the control. Here, let me go back. Yeah, clip list pop up button instead of regions label, right? So now it's just more properly labeled. You know, the table is now well, it's interactive. It always was, but it's working better than before. Um, let me jump down. Well, the clips, the show and hide clips list uh, at the bottom. Uh, where is that stupid control? Hang on a second. Where is that? Uh, clips. What the hell is it called? Show. Well, I'm going to say show. Ah, saying show. Never mind that. Uh, clips. Hold on a second. Clips. One item. Clips table. Ah, that's not clips it table. either. Hold on a second. Two four. Audio. Two three. Two two. Two one. Two zero. Two one nine. Two one eight. Two one seven. Two one six. Two one five. Two one four. Two one eight. Audio. Five zero. Slider. No. Show slash high clip list button. Yeah, show high, huh? Pro Tools Fizzy. Item chooser menu, 1699 items. Pro Tools, 27 items. Show slash high automation lanes. Collapse. This show slash high automation lanes. Show slash high automation lanes. Collapse. Closing. Item chooser menu. Show slash high click list button. Pro Tools Fizzy. Item chooser menu, 1699 items. Th three items. Clips table. Click list pop up button. Show slash high click list button. Oh, there we go. Show slash high click list. Also, uh, the clips, the show hide, I think this might have been renamed, I'm not sure. I'm going to do clips. Oh, yeah, show hide clip list, right. I think that actually, st the, that name stayed the same, but um, but at any rate, yeah, it's, it's correctly labeled. Uh, let's go to, I'm going to go to... A track. I'm going to interact with a uh, track name. Okay, so here's the first track. All right, so uh, here, same thing. The, the, the track name is a button. Yeah, it's a pop-up button, so you could do the rename and everything like that from here. There was a control to the left of this, which was uh, never really made accessible, and it's the track options button. That's to the left, all right? And it's a pop-up button where you can set the size of the track 
like without having to sort of Press guess, uh, w without having to guess with the control up and down arrow where you were, which didn't cycle and it wasn't, you know, it was okay, but now at least you could go through this list. Okay, so you could change these, Check mark, medium. Um, Small. you know, uh, options uh, in terms of track heights and be aware that if you were to uh, change to something like mini for example track options, pop -up button. the uh, playlist uh, selector uh, disappears and some of you will know that and some of you probably have encountered situations where you don't see that playlist selector uh, selector because the track display is too small so if you go over um, so it jumps to the uh, the track record enable button uh, so you know right now you, this track is selected I can either use control up arrow uh, or you could go to that track options button um, track view okay Track view, menu, blocks. Oh, not track view. What am I saying? Track height. There you go. Track height. Um, and so it's on mini right now. So I'm going to bring it up to medium or whatever. Um, okay, uh, moving forward. Uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, well, the level meter is here. I have. I think I have everything displayed here. Um, yeah, this works just like the other comments. level meter, of course. Here's comments, which doesn't work. Uh, at least doesn't work correctly. Insert um, the inserts, insert yeah, Insert everything Insert is displayed here. Oh, yeah, I, I, you know, this I did sort of more for testing purposes. I never display this much information in the uh, edit window, incidentally. Okay. Waveform, track selector, pop up. Ah, okay. So instead of just saying waveform or playlist or whatever uh, you're displaying, uh, it it actually says the name of this control. Waveform, track view selector, pop up. A track view selector. Um, Automation mode selector. You know all these things, just like we have in the mix, uh, uh, in the mix window. Yeah, the the time based selector, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, that that all works nicely here. Um, ah, the memory locations window. Um, I probably don't have any memory locations uh, set here, but I'm going to. Uh, let's say I'll set one here. New memory location window. Edit text. Content selected. Location four. Edit text. Content selected. Oh, I must location have. Four. Oh, see, I I must have been testing in this thing before, and I probably set a few locations. All right, so Next. I'll location I'll just uh, I'll make that whatever the default it was. I'm going to bring up the memory locations window uh, window with Command F5. Memory locations. Check. Memory locations window. Memory locations pop up button. Okay, and memory locations table. I'm going to the end here, and now this where whereas the memory locations used to be like a text review area, which was really not what it was as far as voiceover is concerned. Um, it well not what it should have been. Uh, it really is a table, so I'm going to interact with this. Interact with memory locations table row one, and location one column two row one. So now it it displays this as columns. All right, the first column, one. column one, one. is you know the number four, you know. One. I'm just uh, four is out of place in terms of sequence here, but four. I'm going down the table. Two, three. Okay, and then the the second column. Location three, column two, four. Location two, location four, location one. Now I'm reading up the up that column. Um, you know, this is the way it should have worked, uh, and it works wonderfully now. Uh, the other thing is that uh, it's uh, it's also displaying zero 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 point zero 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 column three by one the location of that um, you know the the actual memory location if it, if it is a uh, like a marker um absolute marker column four and this the the next column tells you whether it's an absolute or relative marker uh let me read across i don't even remember what i have displaying here four. oh that that's the only things i have displaying right now uh but you can set it to display uh, things like at track attributes. If it's a if it's a memory location that has track show hide associated with it, or track heights, or group enables, etc. Uh, it's it's fantastic, and you could set that. Stop interacting with memory I'm stopping to interact. Window configuration button. Okay, window configuration. Maybe is that it? Selected uh, group enables button. Track heights button. Uh, Selected. Yeah, right. So, so here we have all of these. Here, I'm going to go to the top of the, uh, the the beginning of the window. 
Nickel and text. Main time scale selector. Pop-up button. Selected. Marker button. Okay, so this is sort of... Uh, a way to select or deselect which columns you want shown. So it has markers. Selected. Selection. Button. Selection. Zoom settings. Button. Zoom settings, which I do not have selected right now. I usually don't use that, but if, but if I want it to display it, I just click it. Press. Selected. Zoom settings. Button. You know, so it will display zoom settings in its own column. Selected. Pre slash post roll times. Button. Pre post roll. Selected. Track show slash hide. Button. Track show hide. Track hides. Button. That I use all the time. I mean, uh, track, show, slash, hide, track show hide, not the track heights. Track heights um, Selected, yeah, so it's it's really great. I I really love what they've done with this uh, window because it it really works well right now. Edit. Okay, let me get out of that. Okay, uh, what else? Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, by the way, in um, in the mix window, uh, well, regardless of the window, but uh, it used to be that if you grouped tracks and interacted uh, with, uh, well, you, if so you've let's say you've grouped uh, sort of tracks in terms of like mix in a mix group and you moved one fader, the other faders would not move. That was a problem. Um, and that was related to how voiceover was either reading that information or conveying it. I'm not sure, but uh, that works correctly now. If you're insane enough to mix with voiceover and not with a control surface, uh, <laughs> at least you can theoretically do it now uh, by moving those faders. Uh, so that's, so in other words, that works correctly now. And, and also, um, I, I think that also works in terms of like, uh, if faders are grouped uh, in sends as well, uh, that didn't work correctly before, so now that works correctly. So, so that's nice. Um, in other windows, ah, in the plugin window, uh, there was a, uh, you know, there was a sort of a patch list uh, table which was never accessible. Uh, and that was the sort of the table that where you could go through presets and stuff. I mean, there was the pop-up list as well. But there was, you know, there is a table for presets. And uh, now that is accessible, which is nice because for a long time I was hoping that they would make that accessible and uh, and right now it is so that's good news uh, what else oh uh, in the audio suite uh, normalize and gain plugin uh, which are essentially the same plugin they just work from two different uh, perspectives but they're really technically the same plugin uh, the the decibel value is now accessible. Uh, it never used to be. Uh, I was using sort of keyboard maestro to double click on the value, type it in, but you know, you couldn't verify what that value was. And there was this quirk and still is really, uh, this quirk of this, uh, quote unquote zero parameter, which was like the last parameter in all plugins. And I have no idea where that comes from, why that's there. Uh, I don't, I just don't know. Um, even I was sort of confused by that, even though I knew it was there in every plugin uh, window uh, in the sort of the plugin view. Uh, with the normalize and gain plugin, I would see that zero parameter and I would like say, gosh, why can't I interact with it? And like, duh, that was that sort of superfluous parameter. Well, now, uh, now you can actually set those values. Uh, there is still a problem with the gain plugin where uh, if you analyze something, we can't see the result of that analysis. That still hasn't been fixed, but I'm sure it will be in the future. Um, what else? And also just, again, a, a, a cosmetic thing. Uh, we would always see the, uh, what was it, the process button or whatever. Uh, that, that's that been renamed render, but we were still reading it as process. Now I think it says like render uh, or whatever the, the right word is. I'm not going to bother opening the, the thing now. It just says the right thing. Um, also another sort of cosmetic uh, thing, but still uh, is somewhat important, I think. Um, especially for new years users uh, in the track uh, import audio to track uh, dialogue you had two options uh, either command T or command R to either uh, import the audio to a track or to the 
and in this case it says R, and that was that's a leftover uh, thing from Regions list. Uh, technically, it should be Clips list. I want, geez, I wonder if that was ever really changed. Anyway, the point is, um, it it says it as a button now rather than just a command. So uh, that that's been sort of uh, adjusted, and I'm sure they named it whatever it was supposed to be named. Um, let me see what else. Um, oh yeah, uh, there was uh, there was a sort of a preview level uh, in the audio suite in the gain and normalize plugin, uh, so that when you are uh, previewing, you could you could preview it at whatever a, a set level that was not accessible before, and it is now. Uh, so for what it's worth, uh, that's accessible now. Um, in the uh, MIDI event list. Uh, the MIDI event list, uh, when you typed in a value, uh, like a bar beat location, it would not jump to that point in the list. Uh, it would if you entered that number twice. So if you were, if it was displaying bar one and you entered bar 90, the first time it wouldn't, but if you entered it a second time, it sort of would. I, it was it was a bit inconsistent, and supposedly that's been fixed. I haven't been able to necessarily test it much. I I did take a look at it, and it did seem to work. Uh, unfortunately, the the files that I was working with had such enormous uh, amounts of MIDI data. I mean, I'm talking about, uh, you know, 150,000 notes or something. It was just crazy. It was entire albums worth of piano playing and stuff like that. Um, so I wasn't able to test it extensively just because of the, the sheer time delay of voiceover responding. Uh, to that number of MIDI events. As you know, just like with the uh, clips list, uh, you know, voiceover sees like everything that's in there, even though it's not technically displayed on screen, but voiceover is sort of cognizant of its existence. So when you open a, a MIDI event uh, list, uh, it voiceover is really putting everything in there it's aware of everything so it's not like uh, you know a sighted user just sees the first 50 things that happen in that window and they have to scroll down voiceover sort of gets everything into its buffer and uh, sees it so I wasn't able to test it extensively but it works better now that's the point oh uh, the task manager window uh, was never accessible and now apparently it is uh, I have looked. I have taken a look at it, but you know, I, I haven't even come across a situation where I really needed to read it. Uh, supposedly, it works. <laughs> I have not tested it yet. Uh, I have to figure out a way to to sort of I don't know. Maybe I'll trash some files and and have to refind them or something like that. I'll force myself to use it. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, think you know, there are a couple of bugs like when deleting tracks, uh, like after deleting tracks, sometimes Pro Tools would just quit. And if, if you were to quit voiceover beforehand and then, uh, you know, then delete the tracks, it sort of wouldn't crash. Um, uh, but you know the 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 point is it was it was inconsistent, uh, but it, it did it there was a problem, and now apparently that's been solved. Uh, that's from my laptop. Um, yeah, the the tabs in let's say I'll bring up the preferences uh, window, set up, set up. or no, uh, I'll bring up um, setup menu. the I/O setup. Okay. So. Yeah, so now the tabs read correctly. They read the selected state. So if I like go to output two of six, selected tab. See, like it says that it's selected and it's two of six. That's nice. Uh, and that's for the you know the I/O setup, the preferences window. Um, oh, and by the way, the uh, uh, I don't know if this was the case in regular version twelve, but uh, yeah, the I/O setup. Uh, you know, just there are some more options in there and stuff like that. It's it's uh, it's nice and it's and it's all accessible. Um, 
the IO table isn't yet fully accessible in terms of individual channel assignments. Uh, but you know, most of the time, 99% of the time, you'd never have to use that, but, uh, whatever. Uh, what else? Yeah, some of these things also, uh, they're real small esoteric things, uh, peripheral, in the peripherals window in the Ethernet controllers, some names weren't displayed correctly, now they read correctly. You know, there's a lot of small little fixes. And uh, frankly, uh, there was a point where a couple of things, uh, as one of the uh, architects uh, of uh, uh, Pro Tools put it, uh, we, you know, we tightened one bolt and loosened three screws. There were a couple of things that got a little broken, but they were fixed uh, right away. And uh, yeah, so I, that's, those are the main things I wanted to share. And uh, I was, I was going to just write it up on the list, but uh, y you know, I'm way too talkative and way too verbose. Uh, so this seemed the better way. And I thought that just sort of a, a little demonstration of that stuff uh, would be helpful. And yeah, I think that's it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the list. All right. Take care.